All the way from the Republic of Serbia, from antennas-amplifiers.com. Thank you, Gordon. I did purchase this. I sold a lot of stuff in my closet. You probably saw on Facebook and stuff. And I put some stuff on eBay. And I repurposed the money for this, which is now an upgrade for my EME Moon Bounce on UHF. I'm going to show you what's in here. Okay, let's start with the competition style award winning which has been used to win eme awards before this is a 23 element <clears throat> this is a 70 centimeter 23 element dxa for 432 to 434 18.9 dbi gain front to back ratio of 39 db it's from antennas-amplifiers.com i did pay for it nothing was given and this is the second antenna. The first one I've ordered is right there. That's the 1.2 gigahertz. So I didn't realize, I mean, I did realize how long this was, but until you really line it up like this, oh my God. That's a long antenna, okay? Now, that is going to go on that tripod right there where that one is. Remember, that's the one I made a couple contacts on, Moon Bouncy uh, UHF. Um, that is a high gain, but you can't get it anymore. Um, and that's a circular polarized, uh, 16, 17 element circular polarized with a switching network on here. So you apply nine volts to this, it'll switch from right hand to left hand circular polarization. I'm probably gonna end up selling that. I'm not sure I'm gonna put it on the tower for anything. I'm gonna probably end up selling that um, just because I wanted something better. Now, this antenna here comes, of course, I did get hit with tariffs, 230 something dollars for this on top of the price. Price of that antenna was 259 euros, which I think came out to over 300 something dollars. And I got more stuff with this antenna, I'll show you. Here is the feed point. Um, now you can see this one is, that's, I gotta look at the manual. That's gonna go somewhere right here, you know, somewhere on the, on the back here. So that's the feed point here. And um, and at Goren over there, antennas-amplifiers.com, it makes a, real, a lot of EME users use this stuff. That's why I went this route, because we're, we're tired of messing around now. Now it's time to try to get in with the big guns. I'm going to show you what else I got with this. All right, so I just want to show you. I'm out here taking it apart. A, a very sharp knife will do you very good when it comes to opening this stuff up. They pack this stuff very, very tight because it is coming all the way over from Europe. So, I mean, getting this stuff off is a little tricky when you rip it all off. You can't rip it off. You gotta have a knife. But uh, so far, that's a thumbs up for the packing coming all the way over from Serbia. Now, each one of these are labeled. So this is nine, uh, let's see, nine, you know, probably 12, okay? And these are gonna line up and coordinate with these here, see? Nine A, nine B. So this one here, uh, 9A, 9B is going to, see the screw on here? You just loosen that screw right, right into there. And that's going to be on there like this. And we go all the way down. You have some, some unions here. Um, this, the reason this is put together like this with, um, you know, uh, there's the, the big center part there. But the way that he broke it up, of course, you couldn't ship an antenna this long. Good, but it cost you a lot of money. It is designed to be packaged like this for each piece to be regulation size for airplanes. So you could take it with you. So if you did strategically want to go do moon bounce somewhere and take this on a plane, you could do that. And you could break it all down, put it all together in a box or a carry on. Some, somehow you could do that. If you read online, it's on there. Uh, I don't plan on doing that. I do plan on putting this in the back of my truck. I'll be doing some mobile attempt, not moving, but mobile attempt EME at the beach out of the back of the truck. Uh, different beaches, different grid squares. We're going to try that. Try to get some grid squares out there, you know, in different parts of the coast of Florida. So, um, also, yeah, so here's the bracket and stuff. So, there, I'm going to look on the manual. All the hardware is in here. We're going to put this thing together. But uh, I'm not going to go on with the video here. I'm going to show you what else I got with this. Okay, this is something I really needed. It makes a huge difference. This is, all this comes from antennasamplifiers.com. This is the EME2 432. It is a super low loss input bandpass filter with no with low noise preamp. Look at the specs on here, right? So it'll reject, you know, receive gain and reject, you know, everything in the HF portion, minus 55 dB down, you know. 
uh, here. But then you got 430 to 450 plus 20 dB with a noise figure of 0.68. Um, and it'll handle up to 1200 watts at a one-to-one -one SWR or up to 1.3 to 1, 400 watts. I, I'm only using 100 watts, okay? Um, so, uh, there you go. There's, there's that. Now, what this does is this is wired, pre-wired. It comes like that when you order it because I ordered the sequencer. Now, the sequencer will do a lot of things. But what this is going to do for me is it's going to switch this in and out of transmit and receive mode so I don't burn it out. Okay. Um, that's very crucial. You send power into something like this. There's no way you can switch fast enough manually to try to avoid buying this. But... Basically, uh, I'm going to have, you know, plus 20.3 dB of receive, um, you know, on the receive side. And then when I transmit, of course, it's just pass through. So, and, and it's also a band pass filter. So there you go. And so, like I said, the, he wired this up per the order. Now, if you take a look at the back of this here, if you have, uh, you know, depending on the radio, like I'm going to have to hook up the PTT in, right? Um, this, I'm not really sure what any of this stuff is. I mean, it's just different selections, different LNAs, I guess. Um, but he wired it up. It's got a USB port on here and a multi in with a, a pin out right here on there. So I guess I could use PTT N1, PTT N2. That's blacked out. So I guess I'm only using just one, but the manuals are online and, and it's going to be pretty, pretty easy to use this with this preamp. Okay. Now this preamp is going to be right at the antenna or as close to the antenna as possible and this i guess will go with it and i'll just extend this power lead you know so i will probably run this uh, all this is going to be run on battery i'm not going to use any more um switching power supplies for noise that i figured i did have i saw a little bit of noise so i'm going to run all this on big 12 volt batteries lithium whatever i find whatever i get with the amplifier and then the uh the radio and and this okay um, i do have a designated radio i'm going to use the icom ic471a uh, i'm building an interface for that now i'll show you that in the next video but overall all of this again i paid for all this and i sold a lot of stuff that i'm not using that i've had over the years to buy this stuff and this is going to be a big difference in gain this is not circular polarized now this antenna is going to be horizontal you could use this antenna for terrestrial if you wanted to use something, you know, on top of the tower uh, for extreme EME or I mean extreme DX on UHF uh, single sideband down there in the AM single sideband portion, you know, or mainly single sideband. If you want to, um, not for FM, this is not tuned for FM. It says right on there, this is for 432 to 434. And they do have antennas, other ones for different parts of the band. You could check those out. Um, total, I'm into this right now, about $1,200, $1,300 with the tariff. So I sold all that stuff and got this. Um, the next video, I'll show you when this is together and what I plan on doing on that mount, because that's going to have to be changed with this type of antenna. That's not going to fit on there now. Um, I do want to use this tripod. By the way, I got this tripod, and here's, here's the other one from Antenna's Amplifier. So if you haven't seen that, that's the 1.2 gig, all right? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here with antennas. So this tripod here is over five years old. Um, it still works. These are now frozen. These, I got this from Giga Parts. I'm not even sure if they still sell these, but this, that's frozen. So this one will move up and down. This is a carbon fiber mast and it goes up 30 something feet. I'm only using it like this. What I'm probably going to do for portability is get a different tripod um, and make something in the back of my truck where I do go out to the beach and I could anchor something like this in the back of my truck and get that thing up, you know, kind of like this horizon up like this, you know, um, but in the backyard as well. I am going to continue to do this eyeball method like this. Okay, I'm going to continue to aim the antenna, although it won't be that one. It's going to be this one over here. Um, I want to keep the fun in the EME, making the contact by hand. I don't want to have any kind of automatic trackers. That's just me. So wherever I'm doing this, you know, in the backyard, the moon always comes up over here, up over like that. And it goes down, down, down over there. So I will have some, some good, uh, good moon here for a while. Um, 
unless for some reason something changes and trees decide to grow up any higher than they are. <laughs> uh, but anyways, that's it. That's what I'm looking at here. I'm going to look at the manual, get this thing put together. Uh, I'll do a sweep on it next. I know for a fact these are all hand-tested, hand-assembled, hand-tuned, hand-swept, and everything. That's why they have such a good reputation. Um, a lot of the big guns use this stuff. So uh, I'm trying to get a little bit more on EME than what I did. So there you go. And 7.3.